I'm Jay Collette, um, a software engineer at Twitter, and I'm here to give you five uh, lessons to electrify your Gradle plugins. Um, so I developed a Gradle plugin for Crashlytics, uh, and I was so excited there was a Gradle talk going on out here that I flew all the way from Boston to where Boston's office and came out to uh, give my uh, perspective and share some of my experiences. So this is not a pitch for Crashlytics, uh, but you need to understand how Crashlytics works before I talk about our Gradle plugin. So we built a tool for mobile crash reporting. Um, and the way it works is that when your mobile device crashes, it sends us a report and sends it to our back end and then we present you know, a nice user interface for it uh, that shows the exact line of code where your crash occurred. Um, so one note, just for those of you who aren't like uh, very, uh, active Android developers is that uh, when users compile their app and submit them to like the Play Store or whatever, um, what they'll do is they'll obfuscate their uh, code. So, um, so what ends up happening is that we are able to identify um, what line of code your crash occurs even if uh, your code's been uh, obfuscated. Um, and the way that we do that typically is with a, uh, uh, people install Crashlytics into their uh, IDE and then whenever they uh, compile, it sends a mapping file up to our uh, backend, and we use it to um, identify uh, exactly uh, what's causing your crashes. So we wanted the same seamless experience that uh, users using Crashlytics have when they're using uh, Gradle. So here's a funny animation I came up with to represent this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. It's a, I'm going to do that again. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, so to accomplish this, what we need to do is we need to uh, send a build ID to our backend as well as a mapping file. So we had to in instrument all these things, so what we needed was a Gradle plugin. Uh, so we've t already talked a lot about what Gradle plugins do. You know, they add behavior to your uh, code, they add new capabilities. And we've talked about the Android plugin for Gradle, uh, which allows you to compile your Android projects. There are actually other plugins for Gradle. A lot of them are really interesting. So there's like an IntelliJ plugin, which lets you uh, read IntelliJ project files. Um, there's also a Maven plugin, which lets you publish your artifacts to a Maven repository. So there are a lot of different plugins. You might want to create your own. You might want to create like something that uh, relates to CI or post-processing. You know, any number of different reasons uh, that you might want to redistribute code. So uh, first, I just want to talk about uh, how you add your plugin. This has already kind of been covered, so I'll go through this quickly. Uh, first, you know, you add your uh, repository. You don't need to do this if you're publishing your plugin to Maven Central. But if you have your own uh, Maven repository, then you would uh, first add this to the user's build script. Then the next thing that you do is you add your dependency for your plugin. Uh, you can also add like a version range. So you can add like an open-ended version or you can add a specific version for your plugin. Then finally, you apply your plugin. In our case, we're applying Crashlytics after the Android plugin because we want to cooperate with it. So what happens when you do this apply plugin? This actually calls groovy code. So it passes in a project object that you can then interact with. So this project object um, has different uh, properties that uh, exist within your uh, build.gradle. Uh, for example, you can look to see uh, if your uh, build is an Android build and then extract some Android properties out of it. So I want to give you a little bit of timeline on uh, how uh, the Crashlytics plugin development went. So we had a target release date of May 30 for Crashlytics for Android. This is like the first version of Crashlytics for Android. It had been in testing. Uh, we had Ant and Maven plugins as well as all of our different IDE integrations. And then at Google I.O. on May 15th, uh, Android for Gradle was announced. So the next thing that we did was we talked to Hans. Uh, uh, Mark, our, our product manager, went over to Hans and talked to him in kind of a panic, asking about uh, specifically what we'd need to do uh, to implement a Gradle plugin. And then the time between that, we made our Gradle plugin. So fortunately, we still released Crashlytics 1.0, including Gradle support, uh, on our target date, uh, which just goes to show how easy it is to create a Gradle plugin. Um, so all that said, uh, there were some lessons learned uh, going through the process. <laughs> so 
Um, I'm going to give you five um, different lessons that we learned that I think can electrify your plugins. And also, if you're not developing a plugin, I think these are pretty valuable to know just in, if you're doing Android development in general. So lesson number one, keep the Android Gradle plugin up to date. So here was the change log for uh, May 15 when it was announced. Um, and here are the change logs that occurred since then. So actually, change is good. I don't want to make a, like a negative point about change. This is actually really awesome that they've been fixing all these different things. So here's an example of uh, something that we uh, ran into. Uh, there's, there's something, a merge resources task. When you have different flavors, they merge down into one flavor. And here's what we saw in version uh, 4. OK, so this only happened when you were using the Crashlytics plugin, which was a little bit infuriating for our users. We, uh, it, it turned out that it was a heap space issue. Uh, and since that version, here's what happens now in uh, 0.5.4, which isn't even the latest version. So as you can see, it now works. There's no more issues of that nature. This actually was happening for a specific user. I won't say who, but because their project was so large. So uh, lesson two, use task event listeners. So this was touched a bit by hand. Uh, the, this is what happens when you type a uh, Gradle task, so doing that dash all thing. Here's what tasks actually run during your Gradle uh, project. So what we actually wanted to do was make our tasks uh, run before the merge debug and merge release resources step. So we wanted to insert a build ID in your project. And then what we wanted to do was upload a mapping file after you've packaged. So the solution to our problem, which was that these tasks did not exist yet uh, when your, your Gradle project was being configured, and we couldn't have access to them to add these dependencies, was to add an event listener. So what you can do is you can add an event listener, and then whenever an event is added, you can look at that event, see what uh, properties exist on the event, look at the name of it, uh, and generally uh, add new capabilities to it. OK. So lesson three is um, other Gradle uh, plugins provide helpful APIs. So without flavors and with flavors, you get sort of a different characteristic to your build. Uh, your build places things in different places. And we wanted to insert a build ID, as I've mentioned. Uh, so you can see there's, there's like when you're not using flavors, there's a res slash debug uh, folder that's created. And when you are building uh, with flavors, you might get something like res slash debug slash enterprise. So when we originally started, we were just using strings and saying, like, OK, well, let's look in this folder or this folder or whatnot. Uh, turns out that's a bad idea. So uh, actually, the Android Gradle team pointed out to us that there is this thing called variance, which was talked about earlier. Uh, and when you're not using flavors, there's a one-to-one -one mapping. And then, as was mentioned earlier, if you are using flavors, it enumerates over all the different combinations of build types and, and flavors. So variants are very useful. You can actually iterate over all of these flavors. You can look at each one, and then you can do something with each of these variants. So this ends up being useful for us because each of these uh, variants provides a rich API. And specifically, we saw, oh, hey, there's this dir name thing. And we can use that so that without flavors, uh, it just points to debug. And actually, with flavors, it points to debug slash flavor name. Turns out, you don't want to do that. You just want to look at the merge resources task. So this is even richer. It, it actually has an object it declares in it, which specifically points to where the resources are. So you, you can totally avoid all of that extra work. So pay attention to your API. Uh, lesson number four is you can also provide properties. So you, know, you can provide your own rich API. So when we started, we didn't ship with uh, flavor support. Uh, as a quick hack to help support users who were using flavors, we provided a custom ability to specify a res path. Uh, so what you can do is you can say crashlytics, this is in your build.gradle, and then you just say res path equals some uh, you know, path. We've since updated so that you don't need this anymore. Uh, another thing that you can do uh, to uh, extend properties, and this is, I think, really cool, is that um, Let's say you're working on an Android uh, plugin-based project, and you're writing your own plugin that kind of cooperates with it. Well, you can have your users do something like this, which is that they extend another plugin's properties. Uh, so I just want to say this, this isn't an endorsement to disable Crashlytics. Just, it's, it's an illustrative example. Um, so 
What you're doing here is you're prefixing a property with dot or ext dot. And what that says to Gradle is that this is actually a custom property. It's dynamically created. It's not a static property that's been declared by the build system. And then your specific plugin can then go look at the Android properties that exist and can look at the custom properties. And this allows you to uh, add you know, unique characteristics to specific uh, uh, build types and flavors. So as a final lesson, uh, Gradle makes things easy. This is sort of hand wavy, but for our users, Gradle makes things specifically very easy. Uh, they only have to add five lines of code to their, plug their Gradle build script in order to add Crashlytics. Whereas in Maven, they end up having to add 32. Um, and I'll also say that it's been super easy to work with uh, Gradle as a, a build tool. It, it was very trivial to add support for flavors and variants and other unique things that it brings to the table. OK, thank you. I'm Jake Out on Twitter, so feel free to follow me. <laughs>